Hi everyone and welcome back to the live podcast. We are outside in the garden. Oh, let me just fix this screen for you. Um, and I'm really hoping that it's not going to rain on me because it has been raining on and off. So fingers crossed, I don't have a backup plan here. I was going to grab an umbrella or a tarpaulin or something <laughs> to protect my camera gear, but uh, we're just going to have to wing it. So we are doing that. But today... We are talking all about how to actually realistically reduce our food bill or our grocery bill by growing our own food. Because as much as people like to think that those two things, you know, naturally go together, often they don't. And so today we're going to talk about it. We're going to dive into it. I'm going to have a little bit of a, you know, confessional and also just be more raw and realistic about what I'm actually growing and eating from my garden because that's what this podcast is all about. I am doing this live because I want it to be more raw and authentic and that's what we're going to do today. So um, let me know where you're tuning in from. I always love to see everyone jumping into the live stream and sharing where they're watching from. It's always so interesting to see. Um, but today we're going to go through... Um, I was in such a rush to get this set up today, honestly. I only just decided last minute to do it outside because it's such a nice evening. Um, we are going to really lose light, so it's probably going to be something that we're not going to be able to do too often. Um, but while I can, I really wanted to film this outside. So today I'm going to share, like every week, my highlight of the week, um, a little bit of art. Uh, a little bit of a garden update, um, what's been happening in the garden, and the plant of the week. But then we're going to talk about how important it is to actually grow what you eat. And then we're going to touch on some substitutes and some experimenting with recipes, with uh, plants in the garden, all the things. And then we're going to touch on meal planning and creating new habits, because that is what a whole lot of this is going to be about is it going to be about creating some new habits so we're going to dive into that then we'll jump into a Q&A at the end so definitely leave me a question if you've got one in the live chat um, just put a Q in front of it so I can see it easily and let's do a little bit of a garden update 
So I just picked this off the tree. These three jars are slowly, slowly ripening. So um, we're getting a few here and there. They're not quite ready yet. I think my microphone is high enough, but oh, we'll just have to work with it. Um, yeah, so the feed jars are slowly ripening. I'm getting one or two falling off uh, and I'm enjoying them fresh before I get an influx of all the feed jars. Um, if you watched my last video, I obviously planted all the fruit trees. I got my worm farm set up that is just over here in the corner and I've been planting some little radish seeds and things in between a lot of my plants because a lot of my main plants are now in the veggie patch waiting to grow so I'm just filling in the gaps with edible flowers with radishes with beetroot um, herbs lots of parsley all the things um, and speaking of beetroot today's a plant of the week is the beetroot so I really love beetroot it is such an easy thing to grow um, and here in Perth you can grow it all year round I know that's not the case everywhere but um, if I plant this probably more so in a um, shady location in summer I can grow this all year round and it is such a great crop to grow because you can use it for so many different things um, sweet and savory the leaves are edible as well so you can use the leaves and just as you would chard or rainbow chard or spinach um, they are part of the same family so the rainbow chard and the beetroot if you think that the leaves look similar it's because they are part of the same family so you can use them in the same way i usually harvest one or two leaves off um, each plant so the plant still has you know enough energy to produce the uh, obviously the delicious edible roots um, but i can use those as a crop throughout the growing period um, lots of nutritional benefits uh, it's a very versatile crop in the kitchen, so you can use it in a whole bunch of different ways. I love it because you can direct sow it. It's really easy to direct sow, so it's one of my main things I direct sow. Um, and I love direct sowing. I think it's so much easier than babying seedlings. And where I can direct sow, I definitely do so. Uh, it's a great filler crop, so it doesn't take up too much space. So that's what I'm planting now with a lot of my filler crops because I have my cauliflowers and my cabbages already sort of planted so whilst I'm waiting for those to grow they, they take quite a long time to grow I can be utilizing that space around them to grow radishes to grow beetroot because they grow a lot quicker you can use them cooked and raw um, and obviously pickled as well and um, these are a few different ways that I have been using them um, the leaves you can make little wraps or dolmaris you can use uh, the roots to make chips delicious chips um, and if you haven't tried a roasted beetroot you definitely have to adding that into your um, roast veggies or these little mini sliders because you can also eat um, the beetroot raw so I choose to grow the uh, more sweeter varieties than the red the you know the normal red variety is quite earthy it's quite rich and I grow the golden beetroot, the white beetroot, and the candy cane, or as I always miss say this, I actually have no idea how you say it. Um, Shiogia, Shiogia. <laughs> I always never know how to say this. And if Julie is watching, she will um, feel me on this because we are always trying to figure out how you actually say it. Um, but yeah, beetroot is my plant for the week. I love beetroot. It is one of my staple base crops to grow in the garden. And yeah, delicious. Um, so let's dive in and let's start talking about um, how we can reduce our grocery spend and actually eat more from the garden. And it's something that a lot of people just assume, oh, because I have gardens, I've got I probably spend nothing on groceries because you know I've grown all this food and that's just not the case and it's something that you really have to get into a really good habit with you have to come up with some recipes and you have to be growing um, food that you eat and also learning about how the, you can cook the, the food that you're growing if you are growing different things 
we do get very overexcited. Well, I definitely get overexcited and want to try and grow all these different random things. But unless you practice cooking them, you're probably not going to utilize them as much in the kitchen and in your meals. So therefore, you're going to be cook still purchasing um, all the same things that you were purchasing before. So how do we actually reduce our grocery spend and um, eat more from our own garden? So one of the things you want to start with is start where you are. Look at what you are already buying, look what you are already cooking, and see if you can see some patterns. So we all cook differently, and we all have some staple meals that we cook on a regular. And we do get into these patterns, into these habits of um, cooking these types of meals. So you and I will probably cook very different things you know, throughout the week, and that is something that is really important to look at. And this also changes seasonally. So in summer, we might be eating a lot more salads. Then in winter, we might eat a lot more slow cooked meals. So it does depend on the season. Um, we can look at those patterns. But um, yeah, have a look. Obviously, like some people like to have meat, potatoes, veg. Or some people um, cook with a lot of stir fries. I am someone that likes to use a lot of sauces and flavors. So I love stir fries, curries, have to have sauce on everything, has to have lots of flavor. Um, so yeah, I do a, I do kind of cook a lot of Asian style meals, a lot of stir fries and curries um, and things like that. Whereas, you know, other people might like more homely style meals, a lot more like lasagnas or pasta or, um, you know, salads. Um, things like that. So really just take a look at where you are now, what you're already using, what you're already cooking, what do you buy regularly, um, and is there a reason for it? Is there a reason that you're buying it, or it's just because it's a habit, it's just what you know, it's what you're cooking every week, um, or is it because you know, someone in your family loves it? It's a non-negotiable, like, we need to have apples and pears in the house at all times, because... Uh, my, I'm just going to throw my partner under the bus here, but he likes to have apples and pears all the time. We, we are constantly buying a lot of apples and pears, and it just dawned on me. I don't know why. Honestly, we need to be reminded about this probably quite often and have a little bit of a refresh. So it's a good time to be doing that. Um, and I was like, why am I not growing apples and, apples and pears? I buy so many apples and pears. Why am I not growing them? I obviously grow like all these other things I've got feijoas and guavas and um, you know oranges and lemons and mandarins and he just wants apples and pears so uh, that is something that I'm definitely going to be looking into is you know some apples and some pears because that's going to help me reduce buying that or bringing that in externally uh, if that's something that he's regularly going to be eating and the same with you might have a Sunday roast. Every Sunday you like to have a Sunday roast. Then what are those vegetables that you're using in that roast? Uh, those things that you can grow at home. Um, do you want to continue to have your Sunday roast? Then we can look into some substitutes and some things that we can grow at home. And we're going to dive into that. So if there are things that you really like to have uh, every, you know, every week, then we can look at growing those and also look at growing some substitutes to help with that so we're going to dive into that later on in the episode but definitely take a look at what you are having regularly and is there a reason behind it is this seasonal um, and what are the non-negotiables what are the things that regardless of what you grow in the garden you're probably still going to be purchasing these at the store so some of the things for us are apples and pears and also wraps, um, muesli bars, or some sort of snack. My partner likes to have a snack type of thing like that. So maybe that's something that I, that is something differently that I could be making at home. So I really just took a deep look at what I was purchasing and realized that there's so much room for improvement here. And a lot of that has come with, you know, such a hot, dry summer, a lot of my produce um, didn't work out, or I just didn't have a lot of produce over summer. But over the coming months, we've got lots of birds. This is definitely birds hour in the garden. Um, but now that we're ramping up into autumn and winter, I'm going to have a lot more produce. So I can get back on track. It's a good time to refresh, to 
figure this all out and um, get back on track so that I can be, you know, purchasing less. Because it's not just about saving money. I mean, that is great. We like to save money. But it's also, you know, growing your own food is about, you know, being able to have, know where it's come from. Know that you're not having any chemicals or nasties on it. So the more that we can grow, the more that we can um, source locally, the better. So um, take a look at the style of food that you're eating and that is a really good place to start. So do you have a lot of salads? Therefore, do you like salad dressing, um, roast veggies, stir fries, curries, soups, sauces, pasta, wraps, just in general? Because once we have these figured out and we know the style of food that we're cooking with and we know the types of vegetables we're cooking with, then we can look at making sure that we've got supply of those in the garden and then also what substitutes we could have to have those all year round. Um, so when we're talking about substitutes, I'm talking about if there is a type of food that you like to eat or you know, a meal that you like to make, what other things could you be growing to also use as a substitute when you don't have that thing? So for example, if you love to have the roast veggies and you have a roast um, every Sunday, then what type of veggies could you start to add in there, test out and you know, see if those work for you? You could just try one new option every week and see if you like it or not. Because there are so many vegetables that are delicious roasted and those are things like radishes, beetroot. If you haven't tried roast beetroot, you definitely should. It's so sweet and delicious, especially the golden and the white um, all those sweet types of beetroot are so good roasted. Radishes, if you haven't tried roasted radish, you definitely should. If you don't like radish, then roasted is definitely the way to go. It like reduces some of the pepperiness and it's a lot sweeter. It still holds you know, some body so it's not soggy or mushy um, and it's delicious in a roast. Uh, another thing that's really good is roasted fennel. You know, obviously pumpkins sweet potatoes, potatoes. I'm also trying out uh, the canner, the edible canner, as a potato substitute. So I've been using that a lot in soups and curries and we recently tried some chips with it and it was delicious. So once we know the style of cooking, it's so much easier to start, you know, trying new things and adding one or two new types of vegetables into our already existing meal plans and diets because that way it's more realistic. It's, it's going to um, mean that we're actually going to give it a go and we're going to try it, rather than just shaking it up and trying to cook only from the garden or trying to cook as much as you can from the garden. Try and start where you are and add things in. So um, other things that you can try is if you like to have a lot of stir fries, what can you add into your stir fries from the garden um, to try and mix it up. So I cook a lot of stir fries and there's so many so many things from the garden that you can add in there. So many greens, um, obviously rainbow chard, we've got sweet potato shoots, we've got um, all those sort of things and then it also is what kind of dressings that you've got. So you can add um, you know chilies and lemons and um, all these things to make your own dressings to then add into your stir fries and that's going to reduce the amount of sauces and dressings that you're going to have to purchase and you can make delicious flavour filled dressings and sauces from home using just a few key ingredients. So what I like to do is, one I like to experiment and try new recipes and that is how I founded my membership was about that, about learning and experimenting and cooking from the garden to help people you know know how to use these things that they're growing at home because a lot of the things that we grow in the garden aren't necessarily things you see at the shops or they could be things that you see at the shops but you don't see the whole part of it so for example you know a, a broccoli you usually just see the broccoli head at the supermarket but not all the leaves or the same with a beetroot you might just see the beetroot root at the supermarket but you don't see all the leaves um, and so then we don't necessarily learn to cook with leaves because we don't haven't been you know, had access to it until we started growing our own. So it's experimenting and trying to use all of the parts of the vegetable to come up with some delicious dishes. So do 
a little bit of a bake on audit before you shop and coming up some, with some really good leftover recipes so in terms of you know those the fruit at the back of the fridge or the, the zucchinis that are looking a little bit frilled um, what can you make with those what can you bake what can you use um, to create something that you could then not have to purchase at the shops so you're not going to have to purchase those muesli bars because you're going to make some delicious zucchini slice or um, you're going to chop up your you know old fruit into smoothie bags so that you can easily have breakfast smoothies on the go and then you're not going to have to purchase frozen fruit or anything for a smoothie because you've got it all ready to go so it's taking a look at what you've got maybe coming up with some ideas before you hit the shops um, and then we can also do garden checks have a look at what's in the growing in the garden things grow really fast at this time of year so you may go out one day and the next day you have something else popping up that's ready to go so regular garden checks are a really good habit to get into and another habit that I'm going to really really try to do is which is something that I often do in just probably from coming out of this harder season into now an abundant season is having something from the garden in every meal no matter what even if I think for breakfast I don't have anything I can walk out into the garden I can have a look at some edible flowers that I have or just always be checking and create a habit out of it so that you know you know it's dinner time I'm going to go out to the garden and I'm going to see what is available um, even if that is just some herbs to add onto your plate, but that is a habit that you're going to be able to start creating so that when you do have more food from the garden, you're going to be more likely to use it. So you're not going to be, you know, purchasing any spinach or using bought spinach when you've got all of these greens in your garden. I mean, like I have, you can't really see um, from this view, but I have so many greens in my garden, you know, sweet potato greens, um, the edible canna like there's just an abundance of greens in the garden when you start growing food the um beetroot leaves the what else have i got the new zealand spinach the shoots off the pumpkin leaves the young leaves off the pumpkin those are also edible and delicious in a stir fryer or curry um so it's just having a look what you've got available and just picking random things even if it's just to add as a garnish that is a really good place to start um and then another thing that I like to do is I harvest first and then I cook, which can be a really hard thing to do because you harvest and then you don't know what you've got to try and come up with a meal. But that's the best way to do it is to harvest first, see what you've got, and then create a meal around that rather than the other way around. Um, seasonal eating plans. So like we just talked about before in terms of, you know, what are things your what are your go to? Is it, is it is it wraps? Is it um, a roast? Is it stir fries? Is it curries? Is it soups? These things are probably going to change seasonally. So seasonally, we probably eat a lot more fresh salads and lighter meals in the summer when it's really hot. I know here in Perth, there is no way I'm eating a soup in summer. Um, so I love soups. I love slow cooked meals, but they are definitely more winter meals for me. I cannot be having those in forty degrees here in Perth. So um, it's all about also seasonal meals and seasonal eating plans. So what season are we in? What do you feel like eating? And then have a look at some recipes around that. You know, if it's cold and miserable and you want soups, maybe try some different soup recipes and try and use what you've got in the garden. Um, so getting these staple recipes that you can start to just add and mix and match things. So it could be a vegetable soup, for, for example. And then you can add in all these different greens that you've got in the garden or, you know, you can add beetroot in there, grate your beetroot in there. Just try out just by tweaking little things that you've got in the garden rather than trying to tweak the whole recipe or the whole meal. Um, just try and add in a few different ingredients from the garden and see how you go. The other thing is to be growing some staple based crops. And we talked about this on an earlier podcast and that's things that you can grow in the garden that really you can base dishes around in terms of things like sweet potatoes, chilies, you know, a sweet potato you can use in, as a base for so many different meals, roasts, soups, um, all the things. And the same with chilies. I use the chilies as my curry pastes a lot. Um, so these sort of staple base crops are going to help you really formulate dishes around 
and have you know most of the year and then we want to make sure that we've got some staple pantry items so this is all going to refer back to our first thing that we talked about in terms of what style of cooking do you use you know are you cooking a lot of pastas are you cooking a lot of salads those sort of things and then you can sort of make sure that you've got those staple pantry items that are going to help you create those meals so for me as an example I like to have a lot of salads but I like to add something else into that salad so I will often have a lot of like noodles that I'll add into the salad so I'll have a fresh salad but to you know beef it up I either add noodles or roast veggies so some roast sweet potato into my salad is going to help bulk it up and make it more filling um, so making sure that you've got those staple pantry items is going to mean that you can create a meal around um, anything that you've got growing in the garden. And that is, you know, a really good way to start creating more meals from the garden. It's not to, you know, go all out and be making these wild, weird dishes. I mean, that's something I love to do, but to start adding in... Um, things from the garden that you're already you know meals that you're already pre preparing but what can you substitute what can you switch up um, and a lot of that is going to be greens so many things that you can you know mix and match with the greens um, and if it is something like a salad for example you like to have a lot of salads what other greens can you grow uh, in the garden to make sure you've got salad all year round or what sort of, if you love stir fries, what other things could you be growing to use in your stir fries all year round in terms of perennials? So we've got our annuals, which we grow every season, but there are going to be some really good substitutes that we can use that are perennials that are going to grow all year round. I mean, one of the things that I often will substitute lettuce for is parsley and um, young beetroot leaves and young spinach leaves, all those sort of things really good substitutes to have um, and yeah get creative with it so I, I am always you know trying out new things and one of the things I think is makes a really big difference is to have delicious dressings sauces marinades all of those sort of things so you can really make things have a whole bag of flavor if you can master those dressings and sauces and they are so easy to make from the garden and uh, a lot of our herbs which are grown all year round can be used for that uh, lemons which usually are in abundance you can use those to start making some really delicious salad dressings and the key to a good salad dressing is to make sure you massage it into the leaves especially if you are using kale it's got all those little cracks and crevices make sure you're massaging or like mixing all of those dressings in to get every little part covered and that's going to make a huge difference and make it so much tastier and um, more delicious um, and you know just try and keep it simple I mean I think that's the thing that people get really mixed up on and um, it's just keep it simple if you are growing food from your garden it's going to have so much more flavor it's going to be so much tastier and you're not going to have to do as much to it uh, it's going to taste delicious on its own so that's where I love you know salads I love wraps I love um, just really having fresh vegetables as they are rather than you know cooking them too much or processing them too much and that's also where you tend to lose a lot of the nutrition as well so the more that you can um, be eating fresh the better and that's another reason that I just like to do small batches of things so I usually only do a small batch of a dressing or a sauce and I um, use that on the, on the meal and maybe make double so that I have enough for lunch the next day or for um, dinner the next day and then I can make a new one and try something different um, because it definitely tastes much better when it is fresh um, so that is that is basically all the tips that I have on you know starting to really create more meals from your garden and it is something that has to become a habit it's something you have to really constantly try and constantly explore 
um, and experiment with because we're always growing different things in the garden, new things in the garden. And um, yeah, just give it a go. Try new things. Try new recipes. It's something that I definitely need to, you know, jump back into full force now that my garden is ramping up because it is something that, um, yeah, I've really struggled with in the last few months is just, you know, utilizing everything and things get a lot more bitter and um, less tasty in the, in the summertime here. You know, for example, I've, I'm growing Rocket and Rocket has been pumping out but because it's been so hot and dry it is so peppery and it's really hard to eat so I have been gifting a lot of that to other people that love the spicy rocket but you know it's just not for me I can't do the spiciness of it so it is um yeah it is just kind of that time of the year and I think like many things we just need a refresh we need some more inspiration um and I have that now that everything is looking so vibrant and lush and um delicious i went out and had a look at my gardens um and there are some gaps obviously where i'm waiting for things to grow and i've planted in some um little I'm mixing up these things here um i've planted in lots of radish seeds in the gaps but um the main things are in so it's going to take off soon and as things start to take off that's where I'll start to harvest little bits of the leaves to make sure I'm not overshadowing things and that's going to give me heaps more greens heaps more food to play with um, and lots more experimenting to do so um, yeah let me know if what you've been harvesting from the garden if you've got any questions um, it's so good to see so many of you joining. I, I love it and welcome obviously to my garden. It's like starting to get dark now. Um, got my feed dog here. So I, I had promised you I'm going to do an episode on feed dog and it is coming, but um, we're still waiting on the production of these. So we'll see. Um, <laughs> oh, look, we've got people joining us from Victoria. Uh, where else have we got? I just scared myself before this, reading the Woolworths catalogue. Blue Mountains, New Zealand, Atlanta, USA, um, Mandari, Perth, North Queensland, Wellington, New Zealand. Oh, it's so good to see you guys all joining in. Um, I really appreciate you tuning into the lives because it is always fun to see who's here and you guys also give the best tips so thank you so much for always giving me lots of tips as well in the comments it's amazing to see um and you could try your rocket for a spice oh that could be a good idea it is definitely got a kick to it that's for sure um and yeah dehydrating it maybe i could make like a rocket pepper that would be good as well um just see I've got like a few different oh my guava tree we've got some guavas coming in as well um let me see if I can give you a little bit of a tour oh there's a these honestly it sounds like frogs but I don't know if they're frogs or crickets. You tell me. Crickets are not my number one fan because they keep me up at night and I can't sleep with the amount of crickets that we've got. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it for today's episode. I hope you guys uh, got some tips or some re-inspiration because I know that I definitely needed that re-inspiration and I'm excited to, you know, start cooking with all of the things that I've got growing in the garden. I've definitely got plenty of bottle gourds, plenty of greens, um, and it is about to be sweet potato season. So I'm going to be harvesting sweet potatoes soon. So that's going to be exciting because those are one of my favorite things to eat, one of my favorite things to cook with, and I'm going to have plenty of them as they are just about all around my property. I kind of have a barrier of sweet potatoes. So plenty of sweet potatoes coming. Um, but I will see you guys all next week for 
a, another episode. It is going to get dark and I am a little bit nervous that it is going to rain on me. But so far we haven't. Um, I'm going to get this gear inside before it rains and I will see you guys next week for another episode.